I thank you to the uh, Hollywood Foreign Press. I'm uh, very grateful for this. And I tell you, I'm happier than for anything At else. At the 2023 Academy Awards, Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio took home the Oscar for Best Animated Picture, making del Toro the first Latin American filmmaker to win in that category. The film offers a stop-motion retelling of the classic Pinocchio story set against the backdrop of Mussolini's fascist regime in Italy. Pinocchio isn't the first del Toro film to depict fascist power structures in Europe, however. Earlier on, Pan's Labyrinth used the Spanish Civil War as its setting, and before that, so did The Devil's Backbone. In all of these films, del Toro questions the systems of power that surround fascism. Systems of power that bear a striking resemblance to those that supported colonialism in Latin America. Which raises an important question. What is del Toro trying to tell us through his depictions of European colonial power? A year before del Toro released The Devil's Backbone, Peruvian sociologist Anibal Quijano was interrogating the ways colonialism was constructed and reproduced in Europe and the Americas. In his landmark paper, Coloniality of Power, Eurocentrism, and Latin America, Quijano articulated the primary systems of power European nations used to colonize the Americas, and explained how those systems continue to impact Latin Americans into the present. In particular, Quijano identifies capitalism, patriarchy, the nation-state, and Eurocentrism as primary systems that entangle Europe and Latin America under what he calls the coloniality of power. And it's these European systems of power and their relationship to the present that del Toro examines in The Devil's Backbone. The Devil's Backbone takes place in 1939, the final year of the Spanish Civil War, a conflict which saw Republicans loyal to the existing government struggling against the rising nationalist regime led by Francisco Franco. The film depicts an orphanage that houses children of Republicans fighting against Franco and uses a hidden stash of gold to fund the Republican cause. The orphans in The Devil's Backbone find themselves reminded of the impacts of the colonial violence they are caught in through two recurring icons, one literal and one supernatural. Throughout The Devil's Backbone, children in the orphanage are haunted by apparitions of an orphan named Santi, who died years earlier during a nationalist militia bombing. That same night, one bomb dropped by enemy planes landed in the orphanage courtyard, where it has laid dormant ever since. It's through these two dominant symbols, the ghost and the bomb, that del Toro signifies the persisting effects of colonial violence. The ghosts in the film are victims of fascist attacks, exemplifying how state violence can haunt its victims long after its conclusion. ¿Qué es un fantasma? Un evento terrible condenado a repetirse una y otra vez. Algo muerto que parece por momentos vivo aún. Del Toro also externalizes the effects of colonial violence through the image of the bomb. Both the characters and the audience constantly feel the looming presence of the state in the form of a literal ticking time bomb. This creates a lasting image of coloniality in those affected by its violence. For Quijano, colonialism creates a lasting imprint on its victims, which encourages us to see and accept the image of colonialism as our own and as belonging to us alone. In this way, we continue being what we are not. Just the same, for the characters in The Devil's Backbone, the bomb becomes a symbol for the internalization and continual presence of fascism. As long as the bomb lingers, nationalist violence continues to demarcate the space that the characters occupy, defining their past, present, and future. And while the ghosts and the bomb haunt the presence of those within the orphanage, del Toro constantly reminds us of the ongoing state violence just beyond the orphanage walls. Patriarchal violence, another colonial system identified by Quijano, also finds its ways into the orphanage halls. Occupying a position of power within the orphanage, the violent groundskeeper Jacinto is a consistent source of terror for the children. He is also a womanizer, cultivating sexual relationships with women to further his own position within the orphanage. Hello. And as the film progresses, his violence toward women becomes overt. Toward the end of the film, Jacinto even presses the orphans into labor, incentivizing their work via the explicit threat of violence. 
As Jacinto tethers patriarchal violence to labor, we see a reflection of the same tactics Quijano attributes to European nations in the colonizing of the Americas. In this way, the depiction of fascism in the devil's backbone continues to reflect Quijano's coloniality of power. To Quijano, what motivates these violent systems of power is the drive toward commerce in a global market. That is to say, capitalism. Just the same, Jacinto is motivated toward violence and enforced labor by the desire for wealth. His goal is individualistic liberty, and like many hyper-individualist systems, Jacinto sees capital as the quickest way to that end, with violently enforced labor as the most efficient way of achieving said capital. Just the same, during the colonization of the Americas, European nations violently enforced labor as a means of rapidly amassing capital for the development of a global market. And so, within the devil's backbone is a layered depiction of the systems of coloniality described by Quijano. Jacinto, a man occupying a position of power, dominates and forces the marginalized groups of the orphanage into labor through physical and sexual violence for the sake of amassing capital. Not to mention, this is all compounded by the fact that the story takes place against a backdrop of nationalism and the nation-state, with several symbols in the film constantly reaffirming the threat of state violence. Altogether, Del Toro depicts fascist realities in Europe that bear striking similarities to the colonial systems imposed in Latin America. So, returning to the question, why the Spanish Civil War? What is Del Toro trying to achieve in these repeated depictions of fascism in Europe? In fact, Del Toro first considered setting the devil's backbone during the Mexican Revolution. However, he quickly turned his interest toward the Spanish Civil War, which he called the precursor of all the fascist conflicts in Europe. Rather than fixating on the impacts of colonial violence within Latin America, Del Toro instead flips the mirror back around on Europe, the origin of these systems of violence. In this way, Del Toro traces colonial systems of power back to their geographical source, here expressed in the analogous form of fascism, and shows the harm they cause even in their place of origin. By acknowledging the harm caused by these specters of colonialism, and when necessary, taking direct action to dismantle them, Del Toro demonstrates how we can begin to put the ghosts of coloniality to rest. <laughs>